Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Tu, and I'm a senior scientist working on primary and stem cell R&D unit at Thermo Fisher Scientific. And during this session, I'd like to go over human PSD differentiation toward the very specific cell types of midbrain dopaminergic neurons. So, first, I want to tell you a little bit about the background of why we have midbrain DNA neuron as a target. As most of you know, these are cells responsible for Parkinson's disease. Upon losing these cells, patients suffer difficulty in movement such as tremor and motor impairment. DNA neurons can be found in the whole brain, including front and hind brain. However, midbrain, and most specifically, Substantia Niagara, is the location where our target DNA neuron resides in. So, how we can make these cells? During development, it is just fewer than a dozen signal pathways that are iteratively used to specify all cell types in the body. In humans, there are about 200 different cell types, and within these cells, there are 20 different types of structures or organelles. So you can imagine how subtle modulation is required to use this less than dozen signal pathway to come up with all these cell types. For example, all the cardiac definitive endoderm and neural differentiation use the same molecule of GSK3 inhibitor. However, they differ in concentration, timing, duration of exposure, and combinatorial to the other signaling molecules. In case of differentiation toward DNA neurons, wind pathway modulates cell identity in anterior posterior position, and sonic shock pathway modulates cell identity in dozer ventral position. And this differentiation happens stepwise. First, pluripotent stem cells caudalize to midbrain and ventralize to flow plate to be a ventral midbrain dopaminergic progenitor cell. This step is called specification. Then progenitors are further mature to neurons, which is called maturation step. And upon specification, cells lost their pluripotent markers of OCT4 and NANOC to obtain expression of OTX2, which is expressed by forebrain and midbrain cells, and in grade 1, which is expressed by midbrain and hindbrain cells. On top of that, FOXA2, which is the flow plate marker, and LIMEX1A, which is a DA progenitor markers, are expressed at this stage. And upon further maturation, cells express enzymes to deal with neurotransmitter of dopamine, and this can serve as phenotype markers such as tyrosine hydroxylate, vesicular monoamine transporter, and dopamine transporters. So how we can make these cells in vitro? As you see in the previous slide, the nature of development behind this process are complicated, and making the cells following this process seems to be challenging. Apparently, there is no commercial solution available yet to derive a flow plate cells than to the DA neurons. Either they provide a solution to make neurons themselves, then DA neurons, or provide cells whose biological diversity fixed to one cell line. The published protocol allows you to start with your own cell line of interest but selecting right protocol and preparing all reagents yourself can be challenging. To have this differentiation happen, one of the gold standard protocol requires six kinds of medium for specification and culture need to be fed every day. Then two kinds of medium is needed for maturation. Most of all, you need to plan the experiment well as you need to go over 50 days from start to finish without stopping points. 
We wondered whether we can come up with better solutions. We used the statistic design model to develop simplified medium systems and small molecule screening methods to find a potent factor to replace unstable growth factors. From this effort, we could come up with systems as shown in this diagram. Cell specification can be obtained with one kind of medium, and progenitors can be matured to DNA neuron using one kind of maturation medium. In addition, we want to expand and cryopreserve the derived progenitors. This step gives great flexibility in experiment design and also increased efficiency, which we will go over in later slides. So total differentiation can be achieved in three steps of specification, expansion, and maturation. Each phase needs one complete medium, which can be made by mixing base medium with a supplement. The concentration of the supplement is 20x for specification and 50x for expansion and maturation. Pluripotent stem cells differ their propensity not only by the origin, but also by the environment the cells kept in. The kit was designed for the beta free culture, especially for cells in essential aid medium on vitronectin surface. Once cells are specified to meet brain flow plate, progenitors go over expansion phase and further maturation phase. In detail, the starting pluripotent stem cell cell density is the first critical step to gauge the right differentiation. Single cell suspension from the fresh culture or cryopreserved buyers will be plated on vitronectin surface in essential aid medium. To support single cells, overnight treatment either with rock inhibitor or with revital cells is required, which will be removed at time of medium change with a specification medium on the following day. If the density of the cells are equivalent or higher than the image shown here, cells are ready to be treated with specification medium. Around six to seven days of specification, population reached to the 100% of confluency, which is normal feature of the cell. Day seven is when all the desired marker will be expressed and serve as the first checkpoint to monitor right differentiation. Here is the profile of cells after seven days of the specification. Cells express the flow plate marker of FOXA2, front and midbrain markers of OTX2, and DA progenitor markers of Limex1. As the paper published, these flow plate cells are different from neural stem cells and does not express the SOX1. Upon specification, we could find more than 80% of cells express target phenotype markers. This phenotype marker expression can be examined as early as seven days, and we strongly recommend to check this phenotype marker expression before proceed to the next differentiated step of the expansion. We see line-to-line -line variation is one of the intrinsic and critical variation to ensure successful differentiation. Day 7 specification can be a critical checkpoint to gauge whether differentiation of your PSL line of interest are on track. If the specification efficiency is lower than 60%, you should not proceed to the next step, but make sure that you start with the right population. Here are some of the critical players for the specification. First, make sure that you start with the pluripotent stem cell cultured in essential aid medium on vitronectin. Second, cell density and homogeneous spread of cells are important. On day zero, if the cell density is lower than expected, we do not want to start the specification. 
either establish cells again or feed them with essential aid medium one more day to catch the desired density. If cells form large colonies, specification efficiency will drop. Therefore, try to get homogeneous spread of cells instead of a few big colonies. Lower seeding density and slower cell growth would compromise and lower specification efficiency. In some cases, culture kinetics of particu particular cell line is slower and would not reach to the dense culture or full confluency around 6 to 7 days. If you do not see 100% of confluency at day 6 of specification, repeat specification with higher seeding density to reach 100% confluency by day 6, 7 of specification. Once we confirm that we have cells with right specification, we will go over to the next step of expansion. Specified blue plated progenitor cells are quite different from any other established cell lines, and the conventional pathogen crush the cells miserably, and the efficiency of survived cells to make DNA neurons were hugely dropped. To support cells, we developed expansion methods and also special working procedures. At time of passage, cells are really dense and compact as shown in the picture. Cells need a high density split and also required overnight treatment of rock inhibitor to survive. When we start with 1 million cells of pluripotent stem cells, we could get 250 million of bankable progenitors at day 16 of differentiation. And the expanded cells can be frozen as early as day 16 which can be recovered and mature to the A neuron. Here is the comparison data demonstrating the benefit of expansion step. From the expansion step, we could create a working bank of progenitor cells, which you can go back to set up experiments from the midpoint instead of starting over setting up pluripotent stem cell culture then go over specification step again. In addition, this expansion also increased the efficiency of the resurgent DA neuron. The expanded cells maintain the phenotypes which was shown in the slide. When we check the expression level, more than 80% of the cells double stained with FOXA2 and OTX2 antibodies. Then these cells can be frozen down or proceed to the next step of spear formation. When we revived frozen progenitors, we found the cells required specific configuration of spear formation. Even fresh culture, this spear formation improves the efficiency to the final DNA neuron differentiation. Upon thawing, cells will be resuspended in expansion medium supplemented with rock inhibitor. Next day, medium will be changed fully either by centrifugation or by using gravity. Spear formation is critical step especially for frozen flow plate progenitors. The two images are matured cells whose green TH expression are marked blue by computer software. As you can see, if cells were recovered as adherent, the efficiency toward matured DNA neurons were greatly compromised as shown on the left panel. However, if cells were recovered as spear, they do not change their neurogenic potentials as shown on the right panel of the image. Then the spheroid can be plated in block or as a dissociated cell to go over the final differentiation step of maturation. The frozen recovered or freshly singularized flow plate progenitor cells 
will be plated on double coated plate. We found pre coated PDL plate works great, but laminin coating needs to be pre prepared freshly. Once cells extend neurons, they are sensitive to the air exposure and can be lifted and lost from the culture. To prevent this, half medium change will be used for maturation step. First medium change will be done by addition of same fresh volume on top of spent medium. Then following medium change will be done by aspirating half medium and half medium volume back with fresh medium. After 10 to 14 days of maturation, population resulted in FOX2 and TH co-labeled neurons whose representative image was shown in this slide. We have HCS Studio software in-house to quantify the relative objective number of purity, which suggests around 20 to 40 percent of TH neurons upon 14 days of maturation. The gene expression profile of differentiated cells were compared to those from published protocols. The target gene expression was examined using quantitative PCR, a relative for the increase was captured using pluripotent stem cell as a reference control sample. The gene expression profile suggested neurons made from thermal fissure DA kit has comparable profile to the neurons made from the published protocol. And we checked whether the derived neuron is mature and functional. Two functional assays of DA released by HPLC and spontaneous action potential by MEA assay were examined. From the study, we found neurons were functional to release dopamine upon KCL stimulation, which was not shown with the control population of NSC neurons. And also, matured neurons have a spontaneous action potential and demonstrated they are electrophysiologically active neurons. We observed some lines are resistant and resulted in lower neuronal population overall than reference line. If that happens, we can customize the process to improve neuronal differentiation. Especially, the sphere culture can be extended from 5 to 10 days before maturation. At time of sphere formation, use half of the cell number to start with to pre prevent oversight of the sphere formation. Last, the seeding density at time of maturation setup can also impact the maturation efficiency. Density should be higher than 100,000 cells per scan centimeter, and higher density resulted in higher DA neurons. Here is the side-by-side -side comparison data of three cell lines. From the top, reference pluripotent stem cell line, and CD34 origin epidermal vector-derived iPSC, and the bottom is fibroblast origin Sendai virus vector derived IPSC, and they were differentiated to the DNA neurons. The green fluorescence is used to label TH expression, and one of the lines resulted in lower maturation efficiency of around 12% than the other two lines. And the differentiation efficiency of these lines can be improved by adopting customized procedure of extending sphere culture duration from 5 days to 10 days. When line went through standard protocol, we found the culture kinetics were slower than reference pluripotent stem cell line. To compensate it, at time of specification, the higher end seating density was used to establish the 16 bank with right mid brain flow plate phenotype. Upon maturation, cells resulted in around 12% of the TH neurons shown on the middle upper panel, then went back to the frozen uh, buyer to recover cells in spear formation for 10 days instead of 5 days, then could improve the differentiation efficiency more than 20% shown in the middle down panel. Thank you.
As a summary, the PSCDA neuron differentiation kit was designed and developed to differentiate the DA neuron out of human PSC cells. The resulting neurons are biologically relevant to have midbrain flow plate as a midpoint progenitors. As a kit, the medium components were designed to be simple to make and use. With expansion step, you can create large banks of midpoint progenitor cells. And the kit will allow not only the complete differentiation, but also giving you the flexibility to pause and restart differentiation, which will help troubleshoot and validate your system. Thank you for your time and hope this kit and information is helpful for your studies.